All right, there are a few other C channels that you might have seen that we are going to use now. For starters, for starters, we're going to put the 33 long that goes in the front area. So first thing we're gonna do is flip the robot over. This goes two holes back. This is facing inwards. All right, once that is done, we're going to turn this around and add the 123 to the back. Now, this one is a bit more special because this is the connector to the flywheel. So we added some precautions. For this, you're going to need two 3 4 inch standoffs, two 1.25 inch screws, and two 3 8 inch screws, and two of one spacers, the smallest type of spacers. Now, the first thing that we're going to do I'm going to turn this over. We're going to place the 3 8 with the one second to last hole on the drive base. And then we're going to slide the 3 4 inch standoff in. And we're going to screw this 3 4 inch standoff. Screw into this 3 4 inch standoff. And we're going to do the same thing on the other side. Then we're going to turn this around, flip it place it over here. We're going to take out two 1.25 inch screws. We're going to place them as so, like this. We're going to lay it flat on the ground. We're going to get a 0.375 inch spacer and a 0.5 inch spacer. We are then going to nicely layer them on top of each other and slide them between the C-channel. And then stick the 1.25 inch screw through them. As you can see, then we're going to place this inwards onto three fourths inch standoff and then screw those 1.25 inch screws into that three fourths inch standoff. Once that is tightened, you can flip the robot back over onto its front side. On this back side, we're going to add, take the two four hole C channels that we have here and they're going to go on the back. These are the connectors to the flywheel. We're going to put two into each in a diagonal pattern, like so. And then you're going to attach those on the 10th hole, like so. And screwing these in, you have to make sure to keep it loose. Then you're going to mirror this onto the other side. Here's the hole dimensions, as you can see. Finally, you're gonna take a regular C channel, whatever length you need, place it between the two and flush it together. And then you're going to tighten two screws. Select with the C channel. All right, now for the final piece of the chassis. We're going to take the six hole C channel that we had. We are going to Place it on the right side, as you can see over here. And this is going to go on the last two holes. We first flip the entire chassis over. Place one screw on the far end, right next to the C-channel that we had attached. I'm going to stick the hand in between here. It might take two tries, but if you can't fit your fingers inside of here, you can always use the pliers as well. Then you're going to keep this loose. So you have one more next to that. Keep that one loose. So you put this back around and add one more. After tightening the top one, you'll go around. Put it back over to tighten the two other bottom ones. You now have an extension of four holes. We're gonna put out this chassis away for a second while we build the funnel for the intake. For this, you're going to need six 1.5 inch screws. You're going to need 12 thick 4 inch, uh, 0.5 inch spacers. This is six. Then we're going to hit. Right, now that we have 12 large spacers, we're going to need 12 
caps notes as well. We're going to take one, four here, and then another four, and place a caps nuts on that. We're going to do this five more times. Now that this is completed, we're going to take the channel that we have and we're going to place these spread out one hole from the, the end. We're going to take another kept nut and thread it on the top. Then we're going to take a nut driver as before. We're going to tighten it as well. We're going to do this five more times, leaving one hole in between. What it would look like. I'm going to pass it back. This is going to go roughly around here. Now, in order to get the correct spacing, you're going to need a one inch standoff, two collars without set screws inside of them, two couplers, two 1.5 inch couplers, and a the smallest spacer. Now, we're going to screw this in to each side. One of them is going to have the one placed on it. And then we're going to take the collar and screw that on there as well. And when doing this, you're gonna take a T8. You're gonna stick it into the collar. It's not all the way, but just about halfway in. And you're gonna tilt it upwards into where you're screwing in. This way, a screw can still go through the collar. And once it's close to tight, you can tighten it. To check if you did this correctly, a screw should be able to go through here without you having to without it getting caught or do this again, except without the one spacer on the other side. All right, now, to make sure that the collars align themselves to each other and they should be able to both have a screw go through them. The final stage of this, we're going to attach this funnel. First things first, we're going to first thing we're going to do is we're going to get a 38 inch screw to get into the, side, the cut side. As you can see, this should be flush against here, like so. We're going to take a one spacer. These are the shortest ones. We're going to stick that into the last hole of the six hole C channel that we put into. The chassis, and then we're going to put a kept nut on the bottom of that. Finally, we're going to take the the contraption that we just made with collars. And we're going to use a half-inch screw with kept nuts to her, and we're going to attach this directly along here. Then we're going to connect this directly to the 13th hole. This might take some moving around, but for a little bit, it should be fine. Then we tighten both sides. And then we are done. Congratulations on finishing the chassis of Bullseye.